Okay, this is uh, my cartridge creation project. And this is the circuit board. And what this is, it's a high low, kind of a multi purpose, multi use, very flexible uh, board design. So, right now, I'm going to show you the extended high ROM um, feature that this board can run. I do own an original, by the way, Tales of Fantasia. So, so anyway, so the extended high ROM, so it uses two ROMs. And turn it on. Now this board is designed for kind of a single purpose, single game. So it could be, tale, you know, Tales of Fantasia or Crimson Echoes, or or it could just be single games like Mario or uh, uh, Final Fantasy, whatever. Um, so so that's Tales of Fantasia. This is my prototype board, so it's uh, actually have to make one more adjustment, and it'll be ready for production. But um, so basically, it'll have um, it'll have a dip switch that kind of sets up the options, whether it's extended high ROM or or a single game. Um, this one uses the little BA six one two nine chip for saving, but um, um, but that's probably not what will be in the final design. So this next one is uh, it's actually a two-game multi-game uh, setup. It's um, it, there's a little pick here that does the game switching and the high-low selection. But um, but without the pick, it, you would just have a single game of one you know a high or low. Uh, so the pick, you know, kind of does the magic on uh, combining them. So, and it also retains uh, your saves, whether it's a high or low or all low or all high or whatever. And so, um, so this is uh, Super Mario World, Dinosaur Land. Man, why is my picture so dark? Um... As you can see, it shows um, that I have a save retained. Okay, so I'm going to hold the reset button for three seconds. One, two, three. And this is Donkey Kong 3, of which I also own original copies. And so, um, you can see that even though it's a different ROM mapping, uh, obviously it runs. And obviously it has retained my saves as well. So again, without the little microcontroller, it would just be a single game. You know, but you can select, you know, high or low, it doesn't matter. Uh, on a single game or the extended high ROM and one thing also is the little microcontroller memorizes what game you were playing last so whenever you turn off the game and then you come back to it it will start up in the game you were last playing I call it the smart reset um, and so you know if I switch to the other game and then turn it off So here's uh, Return to Dinosaur Land. Um, if I turn off the game and then turn it back on, it will start up on uh, whichever one was played last. So you can see that the saves are still retained. and uh, So that's my board. Should have uh, production runs of it. Um, 
uh, probably in about a month or so. Thanks for looking. Okay, this is my, uh, this is just another video of the uh, cartridge creation project that I've undertook. I've got a um, uh, mocked up one of my prototypes to be a little more um, understandable. Uh, the fab house failed to drill some holes and kind of messed up. So, um, all right. So this is the super demo world, and this is the example of the extended high rom um, game that uses two roms. So I'm gonna put it in. See that the game works. So I'm gonna pull these chips out. Notice uh, the chips are in sockets. So now I'm going to do a low ROM game for Mario All Stars. Okay, so I'm going to change my settings. This one actually um, retains the saves. <clears throat> I played it earlier just to test the uh, SRAM. And because I didn't uh, play Demo World long enough, it didn't uh, erase it. So, But uh, as soon as I put a high ROM game in, it'll erase. So. But anyway, so, uh, so there's a low ROM example. And I'm going to pull my chip out. Change my settings. Okay. So you can see that works. So, all right, and then here's a cartridge shell that I've cut out so you could so I can see how everything fits. So I'm gonna put that there. Put this here. And uh, as you can see, I don't know if you can see that or not. Let's see here. Yeah, so that lines up. Just in the right spot, the other one does too. Lines up right there. So now the the only interference I get when I use these tall sockets, uh, the dual wipe sockets, is that it pushes the EEPROM right up against that little bump right there on the cartridge. That's the only thing that it that it hits. So. But, when I use the low profile sockets, so you can see if I can get a comparison here. So you can, you can kind of see how tall that is, I think. And then um, you can see that these sit down. Um, a lot lower on the board. 
So put it in. And there you can see um, how they line up. And also that there's no no tension on any of it. So So that's how it fits in a cartridge with sockets. Obviously sockets are not necessary, but, um, but if you use these dual wipe sockets and you, you can see here that, you know, the socket's a lot taller. Um, when you close it, it just has just a little tiny bit of tension there. And that's all because of that, that one little Little bump here on the cartridge. So that is it. Okay, this is the continuation of my cartridge creation project for the Super Nintendo. Uh, this is Crimson Echoes. It's a uh, fan-based game from Chrono Trigger. It is the extended high ROM, so it's uh, 48 megabytes or megabits, excuse me. Uh, so it uses two ROMs. So. Now Crimson Echoes, you have to get to us, um, uh, you have to go past the introduction screen to get to this screen. So I've already done that. This is just an example of um, Crimson Echoes doing a save. And so, as you can see, I've filled my save spots with the prologue. Uh, so it does save. And then, um, so the next one I'm gonna, uh, I've showed you in a previous video was um, Tales of Fantasia. I do own the original game. So this is my backup copy. And uh, I just wanted to show that this also has, um, it also saved my progress. And I just, again, just got kind of past the introduction and got to the map and, and just did a quick save. So that's Tales of Fantasia. This is uh, Star Ocean. Star Ocean requires three ROMs, so there's there's one, two, and then three. And uh, although I'm not allowed to give out the code to Star Ocean from the guy who modified it, uh, I can show that it works. And I'm sure the code's out there somewhere. And so, um, so here's Star Ocean. And then uh, I want to show that I also reached a save point, which is here. Um, so this does, you know, so here's, here are my two save points. And, whoops. So, um, so that's Star Ocean running on my uh, cartridge I created. And then, uh, let's see what else. I wanted to show you, um, for the very few games that use uh, 256K, um, I don't know if you can see this or not. I'll put two little um, solder points here, where if you had a game that required 256K SRAM, it, um, you just bridge those points and, um, and that gives you access to the additional two uh, addresses on the static RAM. Uh, let's see here. This is the... Also, I made it so if you wanted a battery holder, um, you could you know, install a battery holder where you could take the battery out. Um, 
this is my two-in-one that I showed you in a previous video where uh, it has a high ROM and a low ROM game mixed. So, um, and this is only because of the uh, microcontroller that uh, uh, allows it to have you know a multi-game or more than one game. So, this just shows that uh, my memory retention for this game is still intact. And at the reset button, I hold it for three seconds. One, two, three. And it'll start up in Donkey Kong 3, I think. So... Just quickly show you my progress, just just to show that it you know still did re still retained. There it is. So um, these are all still my prototype boards, and I'm building by hand. But the, the production models will have all the parts on them, um, and uh, they'll look a little bit different, but um, uh, in essence, be the same. So this one has a little dip switch, um, and here's the settings of the dip switch that um, show what they can do. Now the board doesn't come with the dip switch because it'll have um, solder points that do the same thing the dip switch does. You just uh, let's get that focused. So this is where the dip switch sits, and so you don't need a switch. I mean, if you're going to put your games in sockets and test and try different combinations, then yeah, you probably would want a dip switch. But uh, if you're going to make kind of a permanent, permanent game, solder your ROMs in, and then the dip switch isn't really necessary. You can just bridge those points, and, and you're good to go. Also. Um, one of the other features is a reset switch on the board. And this is optional. Not all the boards will have them. This is kind of request only, but um, the cartridge will have a, um, little, you can drill a little pinhole cartridge, or paper clip pinhole, excuse me, uh, in the back of the cart. And so the, you can, so if you have a Retron 5, which doesn't cycle the games with the reset switch, uh, but you could, you know, put a paper clip through there and, and um, uh, cycle the game that way. So just to show that it does fit in a, a case in the shell. This one has four ROMs. Um, in this camera. So it has four ROMs. Um, and what I did was uh, I trimmed this little ledge here that, that it sits on, that the cartridge sits on. Trimmed it both sides. Just a hair, just a little bit. I don't I didn't even have to trim it because the case would close fine without trimming them. But it was just under a little bit of tension that I like I showed in a pre previous video. So by trimming that, it closes just nice and easy, and and uh, there's no tension. But uh, if I didn't have the trim, the trimmed uh, case, then having four ROMs inside would be, um, you'd have just a little bit of gap there. Oops. You just have a little tiny bit of gap that I think gets out of focus so often. But, um, it would, I mean, it's a very slight gap. But, but trimming those little ledges will cure that. But, so, anyways problem easily overcome and so um, 
that is um, that is it. So that's what the board looks like uh, without the ROMs. And this is the static RAM that will retain the memory. And um, this has the uh, CIC right here, and uh, this little holes right there is so you can program or reprogram the uh, microcontroller um, in circuit so you don't have to pull it off and program it. Let's see anything else. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, ROM 2 with these bridge points here um, you can have either a 160 or a 322 by bridging one of one of those bridge points there. So you can use uh, either ROM for the second ROM. The first ROM is going to be just strictly a 322, and, and that's it. You won't be able to use a 160 in the first ROM. And I've pretty much found that you know all I use are 32 meg ROMs anyways, and the um, And that um, uh, the 160s are even more expensive than the than the 32s. So pretty much the first ROM is going to have to be a, th a 32 meg. So there you go. That's it. For those wondering if. Um, the circuit board, like with Star Ocean, where it has a stacked ROM, will fit in a, a PAL or FFC, SFC case. God, I can't talk today. Uh, I wanted to show you an example of it fitting. Camera sucks. Um, but so there it is in there. There's a tiny bit of tension, but imagine if I uh, um, I trimmed those little ledge corners that, that I'd mentioned earlier uh, on this. Now you don't have to trim that. That's only if you trim it. That you only need to trim it if you have uh, sockets like the tall sockets or uh, stack ROMs like the like the four ROMs here um, so but with here's you know an example of four ROMs stacked and here's my case of course and, and there it is again I just had to trim those little ledges just a little bit so the the back of the cartridge would sit down a little lower and, and um, so I'm not sure if you can see if you can see that or not. Yeah, so so it will fit in a uh, PAL case. Another thing it'll do is it'll also um, take crimson echoes. Here is a uh, case that's for uh, the special chip games. So it's got the extra cutouts, got the little grounding thing. So this will also fit in those cases as well. Where's the top? Okay, well, for it to fit in that in the uh, special chip case, you do have to you have to cut this little center piece off to uh, get it to fit because it hits the uh, chips. So I'll just do that real quick. Okay, so. 
the end. This one has the sockets, but okay. So once you cut that little top part off, it closes just fine. That little the little center piece is in you know it's in a different position than the other style cases, so that's why it has to you have to cut it off. But anyway, so the cutout of the of the board does um, fit in the special chip case. And these are socketed ROMs, you know, and you can see how they fit. And I didn't even trim the shelf on this one. So it's uh, because I'm using the narrow machine sockets instead of the taller dual wipe sockets is why. So anyhow, there it is. Uh, this is just a real quick video to show uh, ancient stone tablets running on my uh, cart creation. A uh, little chip right here. A little pick chip is the uh, microcontroller that controls the um, selection and the bank swapping. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in. Turn it on. And uh, this one. With the use of the microcontroller, it has the smart reset to where a real quick push of the reset button doesn't change the game, but it just it just resets the game you're playing. And um, and then you hold the reset button for three seconds, and it'll uh, cycle the game. So I'm just going to do a quick re a quick reset for an example, and you'll see that it's still on uh, game one. Or chapter one. Come on. But if I hold it for three seconds, one, two, three. I'm gonna start up and cycle to the next game. Probably a good feature for the speedrunners. We're pushing reset. You don't want it to switch the game, but you just need a quick reset. So, so anyways, I'm gonna. Um, that's ancient stone tablets. It's the four megabyte ROM versions. So you can see that there's um, four ROM chips. You know, two that are stacked on each other. So, and of course, that's the microcontroller that makes that happen. So, right. thanks for looking.